it's, it's, I find it um, amazing being introduced to a completely different way to live my life. And um, it's just a, a way of embracing everything in life from a perspective of complete relaxed openness without needing to make anything into anything without needing to try and pin down this here and now and all of the different descriptions and make them into something. Instead I can just remain completely relaxed, wide open and clear. And that makes everything so simple. The incredible, the seemingly incredibly complex nature of life just becomes more and more clear and simple and when things are clear and simple and when I'm relaxed then I'm able to respond in a way that's powerfully beneficial to myself and other people. And the way that this comes about is by being introduced to and then gaining confidence in open intelligence. So the first place to start is always to identify open intelligence for yourself and that is just as simple as stopping thinking. Just relax and allow everything to be exactly as it is. And you'll notice that there's an intelligence that is perceiving everything. There is the capacity to know that is naturally present. And when you just relax for a moment and allow everything to be as it is, you give yourself an opportunity to identify and notice this intelligence. And this is a key point because this whole training is based on your experience. It has to be your own experience. That's what gives it its power and potency and makes it something real. We're not reading about somebody else's experience or theorizing or thinking about the nature of reality. We're directly and instinctively identifying that for ourselves and then learning how to train up and rely on that intelligence. So this is the intelligence of all universes that's looking through your eyes. That's not what I was taught at school. And so we have a very simple practice here that allows us to become more and more familiar with this open intelligence and that's the practice of short moments. So the instruction is short moments repeated many times until open intelligence becomes obvious at all times. So it's just short moments of relaxing and allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. Now the reason why this instruction is so potent and powerful is that you as you are are this wide open intelligence that's always clear like a clear sky without any limit or boundary, without any edge. completely perfect as you are, nothing needing to change for this recognition to take place. And this is another key point. I had built up so many ideas about so many things and particularly lots of ideas about the nature of reality. And to discover that the nature of reality remained exactly the same regardless of what I was thinking, feeling or sensing was a huge revelation for me. And what was important was to not just have this as an intellectual idea, but to really experience this for myself in the direct encounter with my life, with all of the things that are going on for me, all of my wild and crazy thoughts, emotions and experiences, this unpredictable display of life. Now all of these experiences we can just simply term data. There's no need to again have another complicated descriptive framework about what's going on. Everything we can experience is just data. Even this little spider that's jumping across me right now, that too is also part of this grand display. Data jumping around. <laughs> and sometimes they bite. That's how it feels like. But whatever happens, open intelligence remains completely unaffected. In the same way that a crystal ball reflects all kinds of different things, pleasant things and unpleasant things, beautiful things and ugly things. 
and yet the original pristine purity of the crystal ball remains unaffected by any reflection that appears within it. And all reflections recede into that crystal ball in a completely even and equal way. And this is a very powerful metaphor for the nature of the relationship between our data and open intelligence. All of them resolve naturally without us needing to do anything, in the same way that all these reflections recede perfectly into the crystal ball. And the crystal ball remains relaxed, wide open and clear. So there's no need to build up a complicated descriptive framework and have lots of ideas about open intelligence. As soon as we try to do that, then it's quite likely that the data, which are open intelligence, will bite. And um, you begin to discover the great sense of humour that open intelligence has. So as soon as you try and pin it down, and for me this looked like trying to identify what open intelligence felt like. And there was a point in my education in the nature of intelligence where I thought I began to identify what open intelligence was. So when I relaxed and I allowed everything to be as it was, sometimes there seemed to be this kind of like warm, cosy feeling. That was really nice, that was great. You know, and I began to discover this warm, cosy feeling in different circumstances. And then I thought, aha, that's what it is. <laughs> it's this warm, cosy feeling, isn't it? That's what open intelligence is. And sometimes I take a short moment and, and, and there it was. There was this nice, warm, cosy feeling, like sinking into a warm bath. And so... Um, I began to think that I was really getting the hang of this, you know, I'm, right, I'm, yeah, I'm getting this. this, that's what it is, isn't it? That's what they're talking about. And then, the data bite. And suddenly, it wasn't so warm and cosy, suddenly I was filled with doubts and fears and afflictions and concerns and where was this warm, cosy feeling? Where was open intelligence now? It's gone away, it's gone. I want my warm, cosy feeling back. It's a sign that open intelligence has somehow disappeared. So again, this is where we apply the algorithm of the Four Mainstays, which is the education that's offered in Balanced View. And the first of the Four Mainstays is the practice of short moments. So what's important is for us to identify the natural presence of open intelligence with all of our data with the positive, the negative and the neutral. So we have the opportunity to train up open intelligence in all circumstances. It doesn't matter how we're feeling. And you can discover this for yourself. You can take short moments when you're feeling happy. Find out for yourself whether open intelligence is also to be found there in the happiness. Take short moments when you're feeling sad and miserable and to, to discover whether open intelligence is also naturally present there. And you can take short moments when the data is kind of neutral, you know, when there's nothing particularly going on. Take short moments and identify open intelligence there. But it's very important to also be involved with the rest of the algorithm of the four mainstays. And the algorithm will provide the guaranteed result of increasing obviousness of open intelligence and its powers of great benefit. So we can subtly start to build up these ideas about open intelligence, like the way I did, thinking that it felt a certain way, or it meant a particular feeling was there. And to have the opportunity to clarify these concepts and these ideas and these subtle belief systems that we can somehow begin to bring into this wide open expanse of complete spontaneous release, where nothing can be held in place. Again, we now try to hold things in place, holding ideas now perhaps about open intelligence in place. And to be very clear that when we take short moments, we allow everything to be as it is. Short moments are not an antidote. We may have a kind of insight and see that everything self-releases naturally. There's no way to hold on to anything and it does to spontaneously self-release. That's what's going on in each moment, the continual self-release of the here and now. And then something unpleasant comes up or a feeling that we don't like. 
and we have another aha, where we're trying to hold something in place and we think, okay, well now I've got this unpleasant feeling or a, a thought I don't like or I'm feeling particularly negative or critical or judgmental about myself, or I've had a shitty morning. And I think, all right, I'm going to take a short moment with this. I'm going to allow it to self-release, and we take a short moment, desperately hoping that this unpleasant feeling will go away. And maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. The point being here, is that whether it does or whether it doesn't, open intelligence is naturally present. And we keep the focus there. Because the data will continue to remain completely unpredictable. And we may take a short moment and the unpleasant feeling disappears. But you can be sure that negative data will continue to come back. Life remains completely unpredictable. Our experience of life remains completely unpredictable. All kinds of things are going to happen to us in our life. And so we want to base our stability and our ability to respond in a way that is of benefit to all on the open intelligence that is always constant and always, always reliable because the data are continually changing. So when we base our ability to respond on when the data are positive, as soon as the data are negative and we don't feel good about ourselves or we don't feel full of energy, then we're limited. Immediately feel, we feel like we can't deal with life, that we can't respond in a way that's, that's of benefit to ourselves and other people. And so to then bring in ideas about our own degree of openness is to try and pin down something that can't be pinned down. What I've seen for myself is that I do have my own unique degree of openness, but this is not something that I'm a victim to, because this is where the support of the Four Mainstays allows me to train this up. I can continue to increase my degree of openness just by participating in the Balanced View training. I'm not a victim to this. Very early on in this training we see that we're not a victim to any data stream, to any thought, emotion or sensation. Through reliance on open intelligence and training this up, we become masters of all data. We become able to utilize all data for the benefit of all. It's this very simple switch that occurs from emphasizing the data as if they had an independent nature to recognizing their inseparability from open intelligence. So with the degree of openness that we have, we choose whether we're a victim to this or not. And if we decide that we don't want to be a victim, then we cultivate this relationship with the Four Mainstays, this educational program. We develop the relationship with the trainer, we participate in trainings, listen to talks, take short moments, <coughs> spend time with the community. This is the Four Mainstays. And in this very simple way, this recognition is just enlivened within you. In all circumstances, in all relationships, Open intelligence already pervades and saturates everything about you. There's no way that you can separate anything out from open intelligence. No data can be separated from this vast expanse of knowing, in the same way that it's impossible to separate out the colour blue from the sky. And this just gets more and more obvious. And as this gets more obvious, our power and our potency to extract this power of benefit from all data just increases naturally, almost without us noticing. It's such a gentle, easy process. So that could all be summed up just in the phrase, just continue showing up. Just continue showing up and enjoy your ever-increasing and inexhaustible beneficial potency and the obviousness of that. <coughs>